uh, let's start our uh, lecture uh, today. Uh, first, I would like to uh, say uh, thank you to uh, Dr. Watanabe. Uh, he's uh, uh, an uh, expert for the uh, Muon uh, spin relaxation spectroscopy. Uh, he's from uh, Riken Medicina Center for Accelerator-Based Accelerator uh, Science, uh, Muon Science Laboratory. Uh, we, uh, I, I know Dr. Watanabe since I was in uh, uh, PhD uh, students a uh, long, long time ago, um, maybe, maybe 15, 20, 23, now uh, 2021, yes, more than, more than uh, 15 years ago. So we, we have a, a quite a close uh, collaboration uh, between uh, UNPAD, especially uh, Indonesia, some Indonesian researcher with uh, Dr. Watanabe. Uh, Dr. Watanabe also the uh, professor in uh, uh, Hokkaido University and also become a, a, a guest uh, professor uh, in the uh, University of uh, Indonesia. Okay, uh, today uh, we are very glad here can uh, invite uh, Dr. Watanabe uh, to give us a very valuable uh, lecture. Actually, this is the one of the uh, lecture in the uh, Magister, uh, Magister program in uh, Faculty of Mathematics and Natural Science University Pajajaran. Uh, the, the lecture actually, the name of lecture actually, uh, crystallography and spectroscopy. And uh, here, uh, I uh, we invite uh, Dr. Risa Watanabe to give uh, one of the uh, thema in our uh, lecture, especially for the uh, MOAN uh, spin relaxation spectroscopy. Uh, I, actually, I also invite uh, our college from uh, UE, ITB, uh, UG, OGM, ITS, and from uh, Magnetic Indonesian Magnetic Society. I think one of the uh, participants is also from the society uh, to, uh, to attend the lecture from uh, Dr. Watanabe. Uh, okay, uh, I think uh, we, we, uh, we have uh, quite uh, enough uh, time you, we can uh, we can discuss uh, about uh, muon spin uh, relaxation USR for the for investigating magnetic properties uh, of uh, material. Actually, we have uh, two and a half uh, hour quite quite uh, long a long term for lecture actually, but uh, 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 hope hopefully you can uh, discuss with uh, Dr. Watanabe. Uh, a lot of things here about the uh, MUSR uh, spectroscopy, and also uh, I think during the the lecture, if you have some uh, question, you can also uh, raise your hand and ask uh, directly to uh, Dr. Watanabe. I mean, it's it is not necessary to wait until the end of the uh, uh, lecture uh, to uh, to take a a question, so it's uh, maybe uh, easier, easier where, or you can you can put your question in the chat uh, room in the chat uh, box, so we can so also the Tuatanabe can also uh, see the question. Okay, uh, let's start our uh, lecture. Dengan menyebut Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, okay, Dr. Tuatanabe, time is uh, yours. Uh, thank you for introducing me, Professor Desidiana. Uh, nice to meet you. Morning, all of you. So I think the, uh, all of you are still fine, and I'm also fine. So then I'm going to talk about the, uh, my speciality, which is the uh, meal science to all of you. So Professor Lissudi, the, uh he was working with me for a long, long time, just like a, more than three, four years in Japan, then I studied the, about the uh, meal science with me. So then <clears throat> my basement is not in Japan at this moment. So the, my office is in Japan, written now here, but uh, my basement is in the UK, the Britain. By the way, how is the sound? Is it okay? Yes, it's okay. It's pretty clear. Okay. Mm. Yes. 
So then I have been working in the UK on the Mion science there nearly 30 years, maybe the before or most of you were born. So then today, the, what, I'm, <clears throat> what I want to do is, the, I heard from Professor Isidiana, uh, some of you were attending to the Sakura Science Program communication in February, but uh, the, uh, some of you, the, uh, maybe the first time to talk and to meet with me. So then in the beginning, luckily I have two hours today, Lucky they have two hours. So then, in the beginning, they, uh, I introduced, I introduced myself to all of you. Then they are coming to the uh, research talk. Then uh, one week or two weeks later, this this is good. Yes. I have yes. another one. Yeah. So then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> due to some the busier time now, so I'm now negotiating with Professor Sudiana, the to postpone the uh, my <clears throat> talk to be in the beginning of the uh, April because this week, next week, is a little bit uh, tougher week for me. But I don't know whether he allows me or not. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. no problem, no problem. <laughs> so then uh, maybe, uh, how is the English? The, yes. Uh, is quite, so if my English is not so easy for you to hear, so <clears throat> could you please stop? my tour. Uh, if you say, excuse me or something, and hands up, maybe okay, in a chat, then I can stop at any time. So for instance, the uh, not so easy for me to talk continuously for two hours, then if you can, they disturb and have question to me that during my talk, it's easier for me to consume the time. <laughs> okay, so then uh, I'm going to share Share, share the, uh, my screen. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Yes. Wait, wait. Okay. So, so the other one, the pointer, the other one, Laser pointer. Yeah. Okay, so this is a snapshot of the last month. In the last month, <clears throat> they uh, uh, during the uh, during we are carrying out the uh, again, Sakura Science Program communication. So then we've got the photographs here. So that we enjoyed nearly ten days to discuss the uh, superconducting states measured by the uh, squid machine in Riken. So then the, uh, this time, due to the COVID situation, the, uh, nobody they couldn't come to Japan to enjoy the squid measurement by themselves, unfortunately. But I just I've got a message the, from the JST, which is the Science Program Office, the, this week, they are going to manage the, to invite the, all of you as much as possible. Then the, I, I required to invite you maybe after June or July. Maybe do the following the business rack arrangement. If the Japanese government allows you to come in on the basis of business track, maybe all of you can come in and enjoy the uh, <clears throat> communication. So then this is not the last one, okay? This is the first one, just the beginning. So then I continue to work with uh, Professor Lissiera, then they invite the, uh, some of you as much as possible to see the, what is the Japanese, the uh, scientific situation, and also to enjoy the talking with the, uh, my Indonesian students. For instance, this lady, the uh, Utami-san, she's attending here now. So she's in my uh, uh, team member in Brecken and working on a pilot crawl, the assistance by using the uh, many the techniques, just like X-ray, squid, Resistivity and blah, blah, blah. So then the, uh, she said uh, like, uh, like you, she was like you. So she just joined to me from the PhD course. So then still enjoying the science. So what I want to really ask all of you is or during this event. So just please think the, uh, you can have possibility. You can have a possibility the, uh, to enjoy more sciences 
even in the world, no problem. As long as you hope, then uh, you can be open your way to go outside and enjoy the science. So please understand. So then, but in order to do, it's not so easy. For instance, you have to use English like, uh, like us and others. Then uh, if you, but I think lots of people said to me, my English is too hard, quite hard, like a solid like the uh, sound. So not so easy to hear. So then, but you have to communicate with like that, with a person like that. So then at any time, please stop the, uh, my talk and hands up and ask questions, or you can ask like that. So could you please repeat again? I couldn't hear, it's no problem. Okay. So then the, uh, I graduated from Hokkaido University. In Hokkaido University, one of the seven imperial colleges in Japan, it's uh, like a top seven universities, luckily. Then that is in Hokkaido, it's the north part of Japan. So these are the, my old photographs. So I'm here, I'm here, and this is my here, and this is me, and so I was somewhere around here. So then they, uh, I enjoy the physics by using the uh, nuclear magnetic resonance, not me as hard. So in parallel with the NMR study on the HITC, I also carried out the me as hard, the uh, both together. Then after graduation, the, I moved out from the uh, NMR field and move into the uh, MUSR world. Lucky, MUSR and NMR both together are very closer. Then for my viewpoint, it was not so difficult to join the uh, MUSR field uh, <clears throat> by using the uh, NMR knowledge. So this one, these are my, uh, our laboratory members, the all seven, they had the motorbikes by their own. So they, sometimes we go, we went out the, uh, to enjoy the uh, driving and talking. And sometimes we have to go to, to attend the uh, Japanese the physical society meeting the, twice per year. Then we all, we always use the motorbike or motorbikes the, to go out from Hokkaido and join, come into the uh, meeting places. Sometimes I drove the motorbike more than 1000 kilometers per day uh, to enjoy the driving and watching the sightseeing. So this was a uh, quite good experience for me because uh, at this moment I had to travel to the UK and many other places, just like Indonesia, Malaysia, Taiwan, and the US and any other places. So then uh, I like, the, when I was in the university, I began to like such a long time the uh, traveling. So then uh, it's also difficult for me to travel in the long haul, but now it's quite enjoyable. But unfortunately at this moment, I cannot travel to anywhere. So this one is just like a presentation style. So 30 years ago, so the presentation style is completely different from now. So some students who are working with me, they can understand how different the presentation style is from the current one. And also uh, when I was in the university, we used the OHPC and overhead projector to present the our oral talk. But now we can use a PowerPoint files or Kino file like this. <clears throat> then everybody in the world can share the, my talk. It's a quite amazing. So then in my basement, I'm not here. The uh, in Riken, that are very close to Tokyo. So this one is a Wako main campus, the Riken. Uh, we say Rikan Kenkyujo. So then this one is a Nishina center, the, uh, where <clears throat> we are using the accelerator to for the uh, nuclear science, nuclear science. But I'm not a nuclear scientist. I'm at uh, the solid state physics, but belongs to this center because the, uh, technically the, we use the accelerator, which is uh, similar with here. So I'm in around here, this is a main building. So at the west end, my office is there, it's here on the third floor. So then they're very close to Tokyo. So then uh, if you come to the Riken, you can understand how easy you can access to the center of Tokyo. For instance, Shibuya, Ikebukuro, Shinjuku, Harajuku, Akihabara, anywhere you can go access from the uh, Wako city by using the underground only like in Annawa. So my university was here, Hokkaido. Distance is around 800 kilometers, nearly 800 kilometers. So that means that Japan is quite uh, long. 
just like a Java Island. So Java Island length is just around 1,000 kilometers, I think. So from here, from Sapporo to Tokyo, nearly 800 kilometers. So the 1,000 kilometers range is from here to Osaka, around. So Java Island is like that. But Japan mainland is much more wider and very, very narrow. So then uh, uh, from here, I'm not talking. So this one is a photograph in the spring season. The, I took the similar photographs, the Wako campus, the cherry blossom, the photograph, but uh, I couldn't stand, I couldn't have a time to prepare to show the recent photographs the, on my screen. I'm sorry about this. But now the uh, season is a full, full of the uh, cherry blossom. So we can enjoy the, this very beautiful view. However, <clears throat> the cherry blossom lifetime is very short, like a one week or less than 10 days. So today is a, uh, two days ago, we've got the announcement of fruit cherry blossom in Tokyo area. So then they, maybe these flowers, flower leaves will disappear within a week, just like at the end of this week, maybe all the uh, flower leaves will go. So this is the typical Sakura cherry blossom, so please, the uh, image, if you are in Riken, you can see this one in every April. So Riken is uh, now the quite big the national institute in Japan. There are three biggest the uh, national institute for material science in Japan, NIMS, ICE, and Riken. <clears throat> and also Riken has some centers there within Japan and uh, all other centers the outside of Japan, just like uh, Beijing and Singapore and the US and the uh, UK. So I think you heard about the name of the supercomputing system K, but now is a Fugaku. This one is in here. So last week we went to here to see the Fugaku for the another the science the program. So now we are now in here. So here is a basement to use the muons the, to work on the uh, material science by using muon. Okay, here is the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory in the UK. So this was one of the biggest the National Institute for the Science in the UK. So the uh, Rutherford Appleton Laboratory itself is just around this area, this area. So this one is my basement. So I have to go here so frequently and also my students, they have to go here so frequently. So here is the uh, radiation synchrotron source named Diamond. This one is not a part of Rutherford Appleton Laboratory, but now they are now forming the uh, research complex in this area. So here is a, uh, <clears throat> a Howell laboratory area. The, this is basically for nuclear power source plant. But now the, uh, there, are, there are many, many small the, uh, companies who are working for, which are working for the, uh, <clears throat> the development and technologies of nuclear power plant. So nowadays they, uh, they declared this area to be a Howell research complex. So the Rutherford is a part of them now. And Rutherford, you can see just like a round shape here. This one is also an accelerator, which has the strongest, the, uh, which can deliver the strongest mu and neutron beam in the world. At this moment, the uh, JPAG in the uh, scuba is now growing up and the quality is nearly the same. But in total, the uh, quality at Rutherford is number one at this moment. So here, it's a synchrotron accelerator like this. This one is an electron synchrotron accelerator. This one is a proton synchrotron the accelerator. So then the, uh, the beam is very strong, the wide, wide strong. So then the, we can kill the, any person by using this beam. So we are already working in this building, which one is a uh, experimental hall. So this one is a lot of old, the Rick and Larry Mule facility, which we built up about 30 years ago. So this one is a area of my basement, <clears throat> then to carry out the meal science. So many, many, the small things there, then there are four ports here, here, and here, and here. Then the, I joined to Riken uh, in 1992 to start up the construction works the, of this facility. So then I was in charge of the, uh, the area of construction at the site. So then the, for about two years, the uh, we were concentrating, concentrating in the construction job. It's not the science, just not the construction. So then they ha we have to talk with the engineers and local people and the manage managers 
to proceed this construction job than before I joined to Lazar to Brecken. I've never been to abroad. I've never been to have my passport. I've never been to spoken to any English. So then just after I joined there in the same month, it's April, they, I had to go to the Rutherford here you know, to start to work on the uh, constructions. <clears throat> then they, I had to remember the English. Then now they, my English, I didn't study the English so much. I didn't like the English. My score in high school was very bad. Maybe I was very surprised because the, uh, some of you they can speak English so frequently, even though you are in a bachelor and master course. They are comparing with my age, they, uh, it was very, very impressive because they, uh, in my master course age, they, I didn't say anything in English, but you can speak English so, the, uh, so very well. They, it's a quite a wonderful situation. So the Indonesia is now opening the world, opening to the world. So maybe the distance to the world for you is much closer than my case. So please think the, uh, if you want to enjoy the science, and the worldwide conditions at any time please talk to me or my students then they can show and i can show you how to the uh, join and how to the uh, try to enjoy the new field then we started from 1992 here the uh, this is me <clears throat> so i constructed i understood the nuclear physics technology this is not completely not a solid state physics technology this is complete nuclear science and particle science technology. Then everything was quite new for me, and I had to study the many technical things so much. Then the uh, I did the constructions with the Rutherford engineers and my colleagues. Then we got the first muon beam in 1994, November. Then after that, we have been continuing the muon science with many the collaborators. So because the, uh, this seems quite expensive. Sometimes I talk about the, uh, the price or cost of the equipment. So these are covered by Japanese taxes. So then what we have to do to return back these costs is to give the benefit to the uh, collaborators and the users to the Japanese and the worldwide citizens. So that was my duty and still there. Then what we, are going, we, we did is to collaborate, to make collaborations so many in the world. Okay, see here, I'm here. I was in charge of this, in charge of this, and charge of this. And now blue magnet, the I, the I the help to design and installation at the site. Then I stayed in the UK for nearly two years, then leading this construction. So then we've the got uh, the ceremony like that. <clears throat> this one is the previous Rickens president. He's passed away the uh, two months ago, unfortunately. Then we renew the, the MOU time by time. Then still we are continuing the work to work with the Rutherford more than 30 years. It's quite rare why we can continue the 30 years collaboration, international collaboration for Japanese the groups. It's very rare, the cases. So the rare cases mean how successful the art project is with the UK. So then you can enjoy the uh, talking with the UK person so, <clears throat> so much. But recently, the, uh, due to the, because the our facility become, is, have become very, very old, and also the uh, recent situation doesn't allow us the, uh, to continue the uh, facility operation by Rican only. So then we are now the, uh, operating the Lazarford uh, Rican Lamine facility. We, uh, we see uh, <clears throat> the Lazarford, the main body, the, uh, themselves. So then we say cooperation, but still, the Japanese and the worldwide Rican users can enjoy the meal science with us in the UK. So this is very old information. The, I'm sorry, very old information. So at this moment, the, uh, we've got many uh, big record to have many visitors. And now we have, no, 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 we have, I gotta say, the uh, nearly 1,000, more than 1,000 researchers and visitors to the our facility. And we've got uh, nearly 500 papers they uh, published in the past on the basis of the Rick and Larry Mion science. So including nature, science, and physical regulator, physical review B. So then we're always trying to publish the, uh, uh, our studies in the high score, 
the good journals. Uh, for instance, Professor Lisi is here. So he was the working with us, the uh, studying immune science. Then they, uh, this is the uh, reason why I'm now talking to you and also you are hearing my talk. So this is very old, the photograph. And some of the researchers in here, the uh, Professor Goto and uh, my colleagues and also uh, Aisan and other people, they are now still working in the research field the, uh, with us. They are carrying out their own the research. So then they, uh, I've got some students like that. So here is a uh, Dita, the uh, Dita Spitasari. He graduated, she graduated from the ETS, huh? ETS and uh, joined to us. But still, the, she's got a job in the near Japanese university here from near here. Then they, uh, she's they are working with, still working with me. She's in the JPAC now, carrying out uh, some musical experiments. So then they, uh, I hope the, some of you can chase the her and join to us to enjoy the immune science. Okay, so then sometimes I can say like that. So the guy, they joined to the immune science field. They, there is a very interesting the, the legend, the defect, the immune irradiation effect. So they used to be, I, I had the very good, the hair like that, but now I had completely lost my hair like this. So interestingly, the researchers who are supporting the immune science in Japan, they all lose, they all lose the hair like that. We say the immune irradiation effect. So then the ladies are fine, but the guys be careful. Okay, so then the, uh, so then, oh, I'm going to then move to the, uh, now, yeah, Sandy part, okay? So less of that, <clears throat> I talk maybe tomorrow because uh, I have more time the next time. Uh, so I'm not sharing the screen. Oi, could you please somebody? Yes, yes. Can I see? Yes, still, okay. still seem. Uh, slide. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the uh, scientific part. <clears throat> so just simple introduction. So then, what I'm going to talk about is the what is the immune science. But uh, if you talk about the immune science in detail, the, I still use it nearly a week. Sorry. Then when I, I think your slide is still. Domestic international collaboration, not yet. Uh, I see. Yeah. Uh, not yet. Okay. How is it? Uh, okay. Okay. Yes. 37 people now attending. Are you second? Yes. Uh, so majority of students are in the master course or undergraduate uh, uh master course master course, course. Right yes here. first year first year yes first year first year so you have two years master course okay yes yes right i see so then the uh, after master course you can join to the companies and the societies of course but you can join the phd course to enjoy the science which is of course not so easy but quite uh, the uh, enjoyable so <clears throat> Okay, come back to the uh, uh, scientific talk. So now on, what I'm going to talk about is, the, uh, I talk about a basic knowledge of what is MSR, how we can understand the MSR study. So then uh, if I speak the one by one, that becomes very complicated and uh, not so easy to chase the, uh, for young students. So then I, I picked up the topics only. Then they uh, talk about the basic knowledge then as long as you understand this basic knowledge, maybe not so difficult for you to discuss and to see the MSR results. So I don't use uh, so much the uh, difficult the, uh, conditions. So could you please understand much more simply how the, uh, uh, please recognize how easy the MSR is to understand and to discuss the uh, physics. 
Okay, come back to the last of all, Appleton Laboratory. So, if you see the top view here, are Kore wa koka. Top view around here, nothing. Okay, UK is a very, has a very flat land. So, the, the highest position is just less than the 2,000 meters. So, the very flat. So, if you come to Lazarpol, and here is like a hill. So, if you stand here, you can see the, just like uh, the border between right. the, uh, the uh, sky and the land. Landscape you can see. Okay, the, if the uh, weather is fine, you can enjoy a very amazing view. In the Umpa Depok, no, not Depok, it's like Jatina Gold, is surrounded by mountain areas. Is, is it true? I, I stayed in the Begege just beside the uh, Umpad a yes. long time yes. ago. From there, the view is view yeah. very wonderful, very flat. But on the other hand, the, uh, the, on the, to the uh, Bandung direction, we can see many mountains surrounded by yeah. mountains like Japan. But UK, almost there is no almost a higher mountain, so then uh, you can see the very flat view and covered by just like a rice field and the sea field, a sea, sea field and a cow field. Okay, so Mune, what, what is a Mune? So Mune is basically not for solid state physics, physicist. So this one is a fine particle. So then the, uh, usually we discuss a Mune the, uh, in the field of the particle science, the high energy particle science. Because why mu became the uh, important and famous is the uh, one due to one the Japanese the uh, particle solution the uh, he's a Yukawa he's the first Nobel winner in Japan and he predicted the uh, sun the uh, nuclear power force the mediated by the mu <clears throat> then the uh, mu was found after that then this becomes much more the famous in the world scientific world. Before that, nobody knows about, nobody knew about the uh, mule. But now we can use this mule for the material science. So the, what, 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 what I want to talk is, what I want to say is, the, uh, you don't need to know about the uh, detail of the mule itself. As long as we can know about the uh, simple characters of mule itself, we can use muons for material science. So then the, where's mule? That's a good question. So then the, uh, at this moment, even in Indonesia, you must feel the muons. That is, if you open your hand, the one muon is passing through your body per second. <clears throat> so that means the, uh, you should feel, feel muons. But of course, the muon is a fine particle. You cannot see, you cannot feel. But actually, the uh, muon, per, one muon per second is passing through your body. So from where such kind of muon is coming in? That is, uh, we say, the uh, cosmic muon. That means the muon is originated from the uh, cosmic particle. So this is Earth, and Earth, of course, has the air. So then the cosmic particle, that means the cosmic particle charge, particle <coughs> charge of particle, which was accelerated by the galaxies up to the 99.999% of light speed. So the, in, the, in the space, there are many, many the, uh, such kind of the uh, accelerated charge of particle. So such an accelerated charged particle hit, hits the air like that and produce muon. So then this kind of behavior is naturally ongoing. Then the, from the beginning of the earth or the air, the, even in the uh, dinosaur stage, the muons are still there. The, at this moment, still there. The, you should feel these kind of muons, cosmic muons. So then recently, the, uh, we use this, not we, the, uh, some researchers, they uh, can use these cosmic muons to transfer, to, 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 how can I say, to judge inside of the volcano. So this one is Professor Tanaka in the University of Tokyo. He used to be the postdoc to us. So then he found the possibility to use this cosmic muon to see the inside of the uh, volcano. So what they do is, the, uh, they put the muon counters near the mountain, but the uh, cosmic muon has a very high energy, so can pass through the mountain so easily. The cosmic muon uh, comes from the uh, space and hits the mountain, passes the mountain, 
and detected by the counters. So then they are, if they are one billion, can pass through detector one, detector two, and they can, we can understand the position. So that means that from where billion is coming in, that can be the <clears throat> understood. Then making a statistics, because they are only one million can come in per second, so then we need a, a half of a year to gather the realistic data. Then putting these counters <clears throat> for a half a year near the mountain, then they observe the mountain area from the two directions. Then we use the statistics, then they are making the image of the inside of the volcano. So this is a realistic view, the photographs. This is the real the activity to see the volcano by using muons, led by the Professor Tanaka. Then they, uh, this is the you know, solar, cell, solar cell, solar panel to produce uh, electricity to the counter. These are counters. Then they located this one near the mountain, then wait for more than half a year, nearly one year. Then they are due to the Wi-Fi network, it's a radiated network, we can see the data from here on time, day by day, no problem. So thanks to the uh, decent technology for the Wi-Fi. Then this is the image. So inside, this is a mountain image. So here, the white one is a dilute one. So black one is a uh, dense one. Dense one means a lot of rocks are condensed here. But here, the, lot, the density of rocks becomes very less. That means the magma uh, tranchunda, uh, the melted the rocks are uh, coming up from this this area. So then, if you see some the uh, melted rocks are uh, coming up, that we can predict when the volcano is erupted. So then, this is the uh, now they become the uh, quite good the uh, research field to predict the volcano eruption. Then this one is 3D view. So the of the uh, such a sort of pass. Through, to through the uh, for pass for the uh, melted logs like that. So if you're interested in this kind of the uh, research area, of course the, uh, you can contact with the University of Tokyo, Professor Tanaka. <clears throat> he's young, so then uh, he also has he's still continuing this kind of job. So then you can join. So the uh, triggering triggered by this the uh, study nowadays the immune is being applied to see the inside of the pyramid. So this one is on Nature, the news, released in, in 2017 or 19, 17. Then they, uh, we are very shocked because the uh, moon was used, can be used to see the inside of the pyramid. The, this is the pyramid for King Khufu. So this one, the uh, national treasure of Egypt, so that we cannot come in so easily. But by using muons, we can see inside and investigate what are there inside the uh, uh, <coughs> pyramid of King Khufu. This one is quite shocking, the news. Then we, there were some the TV programs to, to, to release the news from this. So this is a very famous the newspapers, the uh, copy, Asahi newspaper. This one is the uh, major, the uh, famous the, uh, newspaper in Japan. So then the, uh, in Egypt, they, uh, in, they try to see the uh, inside Khufu pyramid, King Khufu, then they, uh, by using muon. Then what's happened is, this is uh, how to see if there are some empty spaces inside the pyramid, then we can see more muons, which are passing through this empty area. So these are cosmic muons. So then the uh, result was, so this is the, uh, how to work in the uh, pyramid. So these are students from Nagoya's University. They went to there and allocate these are counters, million counters inside the pyramid. Then did they put the uh, nearly thousand counters, as long as I remember, in the pyramid and gather the statistics. So this is a laser level meter. So then they allocate the uh, million counters so carefully. This is another million counter. They allocate in the uh, uh, <coughs> pyramid, King Khufu. So these are team members of this project. This was released in the Nature, the journal. So then what's happened is, these are well known, the uh, King's Room and the Queen's Room. A Queen's Room here and a King's Room here. But in the end, what's happened is, they found another bigger area 
just near or about the Queen's room. So unluckily at this moment, we don't find out any of the mummies in the King room, neither in the King room nor Queen's room. So then they are, they are now exciting. This could be a real estate king room and we could see the mummies in here. <clears throat> so then investigation is still going on because the number of the cosmic mules are very less. So then they need a long, long time to gather the statistics. But now they are, this was a quite a good evidence that how we can use a mule to transparent <clears throat> the like uh, solid body. So then they are, maybe the news will be released in a couple of years and maybe the, we can enjoy how to use immune, the new science. Okay, come back to the immune science. Now we say I'm talking about the solid state condition. So the immune, <clears throat> as I talk to you, immune is a, like a fine particle, but you don't need to know about the detail of the immune character. What I needed to remember for us is this, just only this. So mass is very light compared to the proton. The proton mass is a quite heavy, but the muon mass is one ninth of the proton. It's a quite light, then we can say light proton. On the other hand, the muon mass is quite heavier than the electron. The electron is also the uh, quite light mass, but the mass of the muon is 200 times the heavier than the electron. So this one is very important character because the muon, muon's character in the mass is in between proton and electron. <coughs> And also next uh, important character is the mu has a charge, both positive and negative. So these are important. We are now using both, <coughs> but for different purposes. But mainly for solid state physics, we use positive mu. Positive mu is mu plus. And the charge condition is the same with the proton. That means the, uh, num the charge volume is the same. The uh, negative condition is the same with the electron. So that means a proton and a muon plus are the same character with the proton, but with a lighter mass. On the other hand, negative muon, that mu minus, has the same character with the electron, however, heavier mass. <clears throat> this is the uh, important characters, the uh, old muon. And also muon has a lifetime. Muon cannot exist forever, like a proton and electron. That means a muon has a lifetime. The lifetime was not so bad, it's not so bad, just at 2.2 microsecond. So if you said two microseconds, that seems to be quite short, but this is quite good enough for material science. For instance, the uh, like a pion, that is another, the uh, fine particle that has only the uh, picosecond or nanosecond lifetime, it's very short, too short to observe. So then the 2.2 microsecond can be the uh, useful for material science, then we chose the mu. And also mu has a spin, half. Spin half means the same with the proton. That means the mu can be used as a magnetic probe. You know, the uh, NMR CT scan, I think, uh, uh, I don't have any photographs here. So the NMR CT scan, they use a nuclear magnetic resonance of the proton inside the body to see the inside the body, okay? NMR CT scan, maybe the some of are uh, there. Uh, this second does Umpat has the NMR CT scan system in the uh, medical section? Uh, uh, yes, of course. Oh, good, good. Uh. We, have, we have in the uh, in, uh, hospital. Uh, yeah, hospital, yes. Yes, yes. That are very important not to give any damage on the body, but to see the inside of the body. Very important recently. So then uh, that uses the NMR the technique, the nuclear magnetic resonance technique of a proton itself. Proton is a part of water. Then the human body contains 70% of water. Then we can the, uh, cut off the body by using MR to see the inside. The same thing we can do by using muon if we forget about the muon lifetime. But the muon can be used for the magnetic flow, just like uh, we can do the similar, the, uh, uh, similar experiment like NMR. So then always the, I can say to other people, the MUSR is a part of NMR. Then the techniques and the principles are all the same. So they, but however, the, the biggest problem is muon is available from the cosmic, the, from the space, only one particle per second. This is too small. 
that uh, we cannot detect, we cannot have any statistics by using such a sort of the uh, small numbers mu. Then the researchers, they, we cannot use such kind of the small numbers. So the researchers, they constructed the accelerator to produce mu artificially. So then we say the accelerator physics. <clears throat> But not only mu for but also other particles can be created by the accelerator. So Rutherford Appleton Laboratory is basically for the neutron science. So the neutron are the available in this uh, facility and also mu is also available in this facility at the same time. So then we have to use the accelerator to carry out the realistic the material science. Okay, how do we have the muons? Let's see. So this is the image. So if you talk about how we can have the muons mathematically, it's impossible, completely impossible for me because uh, there are many, many difficult the equation to be solved out. But unfortunately, the, uh, we don't need such a difficult knowledge, just only image is good enough. So then what the accelerator is doing is we break nuclear, okay? I think you studied about nuclear structure the, in high school. Nuclear has, I can say, <clears throat> the uh, proton and neutron. Then we accelerate the uh, proton. Proton is also heavy. Proton is just like a uh, this size, okay? The nuclear has this size. So then if uh, we use the uh, uh, carbon, carbon 13, carbon 12, only 12 particles, the protons are there inside nuclear. Then if you hit the one proton, this nuclear can be easily broken. So we accelerate <coughs> the uh, proton to the uh, nearly similar to light speed and inject to the material nuclear. The nuclear is broken, the muon comes out from there. Okay, once again. So start to accelerate, inject the nuclear, the nuclear was broken, is broken, and muon comes out. So this is how to take the muon out from nuclear. So that means uh, we are breaking a nuclear, so like uh, a nuclear power plant. So then due to this reason, the accelerator is the, uh, is <clears throat> the lung to be just like a nuclear power plant. Okay, very dangerous. So at this moment, we have the target of the carbon, thick carbon, to, to be broken by the accelerated proton. Once again, the accelerate and inject the nuclear, then break the nuclear and take out the meal. So that if you have this carbon target by my hand, by our hand, and maybe one hour later, we can be die. We can be dead because the breaking nuclear causes a high radiation the condition. So this is the, then this is a facility just like the radiated, radiation the facility. But of course, radiation safety is quite well. So any people can come in to enjoy the nuclear the immune science. So due to this reason, we need the accelerator. The accelerator is not cheap, okay? We need a huge amount of cost and money to maintain, to build up the accelerator. So then there are only four facilities in the world where we can use mules. <clears throat> One is Rutherford Appleton Laboratory, which is the, uh, our basement. So the neighbor, the PSI, Paul Scherer Institute in Switzerland, near Zurich. So, and also the recent one, the J-Park, the uh, near, near, again, near Tokyo, just beside the Tokyo. But the, uh, this is now a recent one. Another one, Triumph in Vancouver, the Canada. Lucky I had opportunities. I had opportunity to use all of them. And I know the uh, machine quality and beam conditions of all the facilities. So what I'm already doing is we have to, we have to go to the UK to maintain, to carry out the uh, collaboration studies with my users, collaborators. And then sometimes I go to PSI. If I can have a beam time in a PSI and enjoy immune science. And also the, uh, sometimes I go to Japan. So the unfortunately at this moment, the Switzerland, UK and Canada are all closed for the foreigners. <clears throat> then the last year, last one year, 
I couldn't visit anywhere at this moment. So then I'm waiting for the triumph to be open for the world. The Canada should open the border. Then I can apply the beam time schedule to triumph and enjoy the triumph beam. This is also a good facility. And long time ago, I went to there and enjoy the nature and the fruits and atmosphere and science in triumph. And Vancouver city is also good. <clears throat> so then we can enjoy the science and such things and foods. And also Switzerland is also good. But when I took my students the, uh, to PSI, the, uh, some students the, uh, cannot eat some, some things because they, uh, <clears throat> due to the uh, Islam, the uh, Islam rule. But they can enjoy the cheese and many things. And sometimes they went climb up the mountain and enjoy such thing, then come back. Very nice. So not only for science, but also we can enjoy the world. So, and also there are two characters. We say DC immune source and pulse immune source. So DC means they are continuous, pulse means pulse. So PSI, Triumph, the DC immune source, the pulse immune afford the JPAC and Rutherford. Then sometimes we have to the, uh, choose one of, one of each the, uh, to be applied to our samples. Sometimes we have to choose a pulse, sometimes we have to choose a DC. Depends on the sample condition. So then that is why we have to apply and we have to use all the facility. So then they, I can skip the detail. So then they, nowadays, there are two facilities are coming up the, in Asian countries. One is in China, near Hong Kong, CSNS. The, this is actually now working, but the beams, beam strength is not so high, very weak. So the, I've been to here a couple of times and saw the facility conditions. So I'm still working with say, uh, some people the, uh, in this facility and hopefully I can visit again and to start to think about the, uh, how to use this Chinese facility. But Chinese, this facility is very, I guess, in the Midland area, not so easy to access. We have to the, uh, fly to near airport, but those are far away from this facility, like uh, more than 70 or 100 kilometers. Not so easy to move around in China. Instead, the uh, Korea, is now building up the one more the facility, it is a lawn. So this is near Seoul. Seoul. Then they are like uh, 30 minutes by a bullet train from Seoul, the indigenous. So this is a little bit uh, delayed, but hopefully, and also due to the Korean economic situation, the Korean government situation, mm -hmm. this lawn project is always being delayed and delayed. But we hope the allowance is coming up very soon. If so, this is not for my age, but also for your age. Maybe all of you can enjoy the, all the facilities in the world, including Laon and the CSNS. So then you can have more opportunities to enjoy mural science. Okay, <clears throat> we say mural, but just only simple mural is easy to say. But in detail, mural has many characters. For instance, Mu has two characters, as I said, it's a plus charged, minus charged. We say the positive muon and negative muon. Of course, each has each character that is different from each other. Then we have to choose which one is which for your science. The next one is the both of them, the uh, charged, plus charged, negative charged, both are available in a cosmic muon. And sometimes the cloud muon. These are also different characters. But a cosmic muon, we can have both plus and negative. Then for the plus, we can have a surface muon, decay muon. These are also have different characters. We have to choose which one which. And also negative muon, they have decay muon. They don't have a surface muon, they have decay muon. Then how we can use it, for instance, surface muon, we, we use the surface muon for MSR and also other, the, uh, like a chip experiment. Chip experiment means it's just like a, uh, how the control motherboard, you know, PC has a motherboard, how the motherboard shows the malfunctions by using the cosmic ray. This means if you send the uh, satellite to the space, 
Satellite has motherboards and PCs, but a PC sometimes shows the malfunctions by hitting the uh, cosmic ray, cosmic particle. So then we can simulate such a situation by using MU on the Earth. So such things we can do. And also high pressure mirrors and blah, blah, blah. The decay immune, uh, decay immune are also available for other the high technology, uh, high technique, the mirrors are, advanced mirrors are the conditions. And so negative immune, this also the, uh, has a uh, interesting character. And uh, sometimes we can investigate the uh, shape of nuclear, <clears throat> nuclear shape, okay, how the nuclear shows the spherical or deformed shape or not. By using a negative view, we can do the, such an investigation. But this is not in my field. This is a nuclear science field. And also elemental analysis. This is now very fashionable. For instance, if you have a very important, the old goods like a sword or something like a thousand years ago, we cannot destroy that one to investigate the inside of the soul. But by using muon, we can analyze the what sort of components are included into in the, such a very important items. Then this is very fashionable about this moment in the Liverpool in the UK. So lots of the uh, researchers like uh, who are the uh, working with the museums, you know, they come into Liverpool bringing a very famous the old the items. But sometimes the uh, restrictions to bring out such a very important the items from museum is very hard. So then the, uh, we used to have a plan to do such things. The, there was a very important, very famous the uh, gold coin, Greek coin, the store in the British Museum. So then uh, in order to bring out such a very important coins, the uh, two British Museum people have to be just beside a coin for 24 hours. That was a strong condition, not to be the story. Then what's happened in the end is the British Museum suggested to send two or three people from the British Museum and stay just beside the coin during all the time, experiment, during the experiment, all the time. Then they, uh, then other people gave up such a very strong the restrictions. But still, the Lazarport, the uh, our teams, the uh, are now trying to the uh, find us such a, the opportunity to enjoy. Anyway, the, what I want to say is the uh, moon are variable for any wide in the very wide range of the scientific field, and can enjoy so many types of science. Not only for myself, but also for other science you can choose. But all are moon science. So then what? I'm going to talk about the use of the surface mirror, especially from now on, because the, uh, if you talk about everything, I need more than one week. Then I choose only surface mirror the, uh, to discuss and to explain how we can use the mirrors to all of you. Okay, please remember, my talk is on the basis of the use of the surface mirror. So they come back to regional dashboard, the recon mirror facility. So our facility is in here, okay? And so this is as a professor Lissi. Yes. And so can I have a five minutes break? Yes, 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 of course, of course. It's already one hour. So you, you... I don't like personally two hours talk, so then the better. Yeah, to... yeah. Yeah, okay. You can you can uh take your time for five, five or ten minutes. Yeah, and... like to yes, 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 please. Thank you, Terima Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So, one okay. Minute, uh, so please have a rest. Okay, okay, we will uh, break, break for five minutes. Uh, if I you go, or yes, yes, okay, no problem. Yes, please. I got all. Yes. Okay, for the student, if you have a question, uh, you can, you can, uh, you can write your question in the chat box. Okay. Uh, don't forget to uh, to fill out the the uh, absent the the daftar hadir ya sudah ada di uh, di chat room mangga di di isi. Okay. Oke, kita istirahat sebentar.
Jadi kuliah uh, kristalografi kita uh, minggu ini minggu ini uh, diisi oleh Pak Watanabe ya. Uh, minggu depan uh, kita uh, kuliah sedikit tentang uh, point group ya. Point group lanjutkan kemudian dua minggu lagi seharusnya kuliah Pak Watanabe uh, kita adakan uh, berturut-turut namun Uh, karena beliau uh, apa mendapatkan jadwal yang uh, sangat ketat mendadak sebenarnya sudah sudah apa sudah sudah deal ya uh, satu bulan lalu tapi kemudian mendapat jadwal yang uh, sangat uh, mendadak terutama untuk uh, ada beberapa deadline yang tidak bisa ditinggalkan pada tanggal uh, pada minggu depan ya tanggal 1 April jadi seharusnya perkuliahan 25 sampai 1 April. Jadi uh, beliau minta untuk uh, postpone uh, one week gitu. Jadi uh, jadi tanggal 8 uh, April itu baru uh, masuk ke perkuliahan uh, kedua ya. Perkuliahan kedua uh, nanti temanya uh, adalah tentang uh, DFT. Tadi kemarin itu sebenarnya diskusinya DFT uh, dan uh, superconductivity ya, superconductivity. Uh, seperti itu uh, nanti mungkin pertemuan kedua akan kita uh, apa kita update lagi uh, baik itu tema ataupun uh, ininya ya uh, apa namanya itu uh, linknya itu seperti itu kemudian setelah itu uh, uh, minggu berikutnya uh, saya sudah invite uh, dokter Uh, Michael Michael Manawan uh, beliau adalah uh, uh, praktisi expert untuk uh, XRD uh, analisis ya XRD analisis uh, beliau adalah uh, salah seorang uh, konsultan di uh, di uh, beberapa uh, beberapa supplier uh, apa peralatan peralatan khususnya X-ray ya seperti seperti untuk uh, untuk X-ray uh, broker ya broker itu uh, beliau biasa menyampaikan uh, pelatihan pelatihan ataupun apa uh, kuliah kuliah tentang pemanfaatan uh, X-ray tentang pemanfaatan X-ray uh, beserta dengan analisisnya jadi Uh, kita mungkin uh, sekitar uh, tiga minggu lagi ya tiga minggu lagi akan uh, mengundang uh, beliau untuk uh, untuk me- menyampaikan uh, perkuliahannya ya, khusus uh, perkuliahannya khusus untuk kita mahasiswa uh, S2 ya mahasiswa S2 tapi nanti uh, seperti biasa akan open untuk uh, teman-teman mungkin di Uh, di prodi lain di fakultas lain yang membutuhkannya membutuhkan informasi tentang XRD mungkin uh, ada beberapa mahasiswa yang uh, sudah pernah memakai XRD ya, terutama mahasiswa S2 uh, S3 mungkin uh, memakai XRD kemudian uh, apa uh, masih bingung analisisnya seperti apa gitu ya analisis serta uh, teorinya seperti apa nah itu kita akan uh, kita akan undang khusus uh, expertnya jadi nanti uh, perkuliahannya memang uh, memang benar-benar dari uh, expert expert untuk analisis uh, XRD misalnya seperti itu ya uh, karena perkuliahan kita memang adalah kristalografi kristalografi dan uh, dikraksi ya kan kristalisasi itu untuk me- mengeksplor uh, sifat-sifat material ya material seperti itu nah itu nanti mudah-mudahan eh, apa bisa bisa kita laksanakan di bulan April nanti setelah perkuliahan ini itu seperti itu oke okay, uh, okay, thank you for waiting yes okay no problem uh, by the way are there any questions until now silakan jika ada pertanyaan Uh, if you can please translate. If you have no question, that means you completely understood or you completely don't understand. 
I think I think it's uh, from uh, until uh, this uh, point they completely understood. Wonderful. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, can I can I just start please. again? Yes, please. Okay. So they uh, come back to Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. Sorry for waiting. <clears throat> so here, red circle is a. Uh, in, we can come into this red circle area to see the air facility. So here, the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. This is the oldest building of Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. And we say the target station one, target station two. So this one is newer than here. This one is very old, like uh, 40 years old. The accelerator here. <clears throat> and sometimes, if the, every time in the morning, we have to walk here to access to the experimental area. So walking uh, through here, through here, come into the uh, accelerator area, then they uh, come into this building. So in the morning, all the time we pass through here, especially in the very early morning, like at uh, seven o'clock, six o'clock, we can see many rabbits uh, jumping around here. Then the uh, rabbit is very famous in the UK, we say Peter rabbit. So then there are many, many rabbits, but we cannot catch up anything. So in the last 30 years, I tried to catch up some something, but not yet succeeded. So the inside transparent view is like that. So the linear accelerator, fast accelerator, and main accelerator, we say main ding, and come, come into the target station one, and this one cut target station two. This is for soft matter, just like organics, by using neutron. This one is any materials by using muons and neutron. So here is a recognized muon facility. So then come back to the uh, our current the uh, photograph. So we have four experiment area, the port two we say, port four, port one, port three here. The port three is being closed now <clears throat> because uh, we have no budget, no plan to use this one. This one is a general purpose use. So this one is now the uh, use being used for like a nuclear physics to measure the radiation, uh, to measure the uh, radius of the proton itself. So the, these port four, port two are for MSR. So then I'm talking about the, these two now. Then what we are doing is two types of the researches. One is a muon spin relaxation MSR, it's an experimental method. The another one is a competition method, density functional theory calculation, we say DFT. So then they are both are completely different. One is experiment, one is a competition. <clears throat> so then I've got uh, some student who uh, who work who work on both, like an uh, experimental student and a competition student. So then this time I talk about the experimental part, meal spin relaxation. So next time I I'm not being asked to by uh, Professor Lissi to talk about the DFT, but I'm the experimentalist, not the competition people. Then they, uh, I try to talk about the DFT calculations, but maybe if you are interested in, please join <coughs> to us uh, to carry out such a computational the material science. The uh, such kind of people are also very welcome. I'm now recruiting such kind of the students who are interested in the computational method. That means they are sitting on the in front of the PC and uh, calculating all the time by using a supercomputing system of Britain. So the image on the mirror side, just like that. So then the uh, import recent, for recent physics, what the important point is how to understand the multi interactions between the magnetic spins. Okay, so the multi spin interaction can cause, <coughs> can cause the fluctuation properties of the, the multi spins. So how easy, how fast, how slow, and how static the, those spins uh, behaving. That is the main part of the material science. Then we put the mule in near the multi spin. The other doctor, mule has a spin of half. Then the, this mule spin can also have the magnetic interaction between multi spin. So if we observe this mule spin, we can understand the indirectly the property of the magnetic spins. So this is an uh, interesting the property of MSR. But the important point is how we can understand such a multi interaction between muon spin and multi spin, and how easily we can have the information or the multi spin the 
<coughs> dynamics. So then the, uh, the another uh, other characters, the, uh, uh, how can I say, uh, what is the advantage on MSR compared to the other techniques? Do you remember I talked about the uh, MSR to be just like NMR? But of course, MSR is completely different from NMR because due to these characters. The, what sort of the uh, characters are important for the multi, the uh, for material science are like that. The uh, we say gamma. It's a uh, we say the gyromagnetic the uh, ratio. That means if you apply one fixed multi field, how quickly muon spin is in a precessing around the uh, multi field. That is a llama spin precession. Maybe some of you already studied the llama spin precession motion. Lama spin precession motion. So that is the, uh, how can I say, special character for the magnetic spins in the magnetic field. So then if we apply the same magnetic field, how quickly the spins are rotating, that is called, that related to the sensitivity as a magnetic probe. <clears throat> so the proton has a quite high, the uh, gamma value, magnetic, magnetic, the general magnetic ratio, but muon has the highest general magnetic ratio among magnetic probes. That is gamma bar is 135.5 megahertz per kilohertz. That means if you apply one kilohertz, hmm? 10, 10 is 10, one kilohertz that the muon is precessing, precesses the uh, near VC frequency of more than 100 megahertz around the magnetic field. So then if you see, if you apply the muons, maybe we can have much more high sensitivity compared to the proton, that means compared to the uh, uh, <coughs> NMR. So the most important character uh, is the sensitivity and also the how the sensitivity is. So, okay, this is just like an image, okay? So nuclear dipole, we say electron dipole, but nuclear dipole is different from electron dipole. Electron has a spin. Nuclear also has a spin. But nuclear dipole spin is much, much smaller than the uh, electron spin. Usually, nuclear dipole field multi spin is two orders smaller than electric spin. But this is multi dipole. Multi dipole is just like a magnet, okay? Magnet can cause the multi field around the uh, magnet. magnet. Okay, this is very just a basic knowledge for elementary school, okay? So, in the material, those kind of nuclear dipole can cause around one gas around the mirror inside the material. So how large is one gas? That is the question. On the earth, okay, as you know, ah, the earth has a multi field. So then the, uh, we say earth field. The earth field is just around 400 milligas on the earth. Even in Indonesia, the multi field from the earth is just like a half of the one gas, half gas. But inside the material, nuclear dipole field can make just like one gas. But one gas is quite a good enough field for muon to be detect, to detect. So such sensitivity is a quite uh, variable for the material science. We can see the many, the small amount of the uh, small amount of the moment inside the material. And this one is the most important character of the MSR. The muon has a self-spin polarization. Self-spin polarization means from the beginning of the creation of the muon, all the muons, we, okay, surface muon, has the same spin direction automatically, even in the zero field condition. The nuclear multi, nuclear multi resonance, what they are doing is we apply the strong multi field to make a, such, this kind of polar spin polarization of the nuclear dipole. However, even we don't apply the uh, any multi field to muons, muon can show the spin, self spin polarization. That means the MSR can do the, the uh, any resonance experiment in the zero field condition. Zero field condition means quite the ideal conditions for research in the uh, multi materials. So that we can say the muon can give us the ideal data they are taken in the magnetic materials. Okay, if you say magnetic materials, there are many kinds of magnetic materials. For instance, Professor Listy is now studying the high TC superconducting oxide. But if you say superconducting oxide, that seems to be like a metal.
But basically, the superconducting oxide, high TC superconducting oxide, AC insulator, in, and also the magnetic material. That means that we have to understand what sort of magnetic interactions are there in the material. So then MIRSAR is a quite uh, ideal the tool to study such kind of magnetic interaction. So, okay, this is the image of the MIRSAR, what we are doing at Rutherford and, and Triumph and Avia. All the same, basically the same, principle is the same. So that we throw in the mirror into the material, okay? We throw in the mirror into the material by using the accelerator, okay? Say this one, accelerator, make a mirror and throw into the material. So material is just like a sample, we say target sample. Then we locate, okay, forward and backward counter. Counter means how to detect the muons. <coughs> then the uh, muon is inside the sample, but counters are outside the sample. So that we cannot directly see the muon force. So then what, how we can detect the uh, muon signal is, luckily muon can give us a signal from the muon. That signal is coming out from the sample and hits the counter. Then we can have the signal from the counter Then we can understand the uh, muons, the uh, behavior. Okay, this is due to the lifetime of the muon. Lifetime means muon decays to other particles. The muon decays the uh, other particle. The, in our case, this means positron. Positron means electron with a positive charge. Okay, so the one muon emits the one positron and detect <coughs> the, uh, detected by the counters, forward counter, backward counters. So then we, what we do is just counting the number of these positrons, okay? Just only count, simply count, one, two, three, four, five, that's only. Then they uh, just forward counters, backward counters, how many the events we counted by forward and backward counters. Then the following this equation, we see the data. Data means we say asymmetry parameter. Asymmetry parameter means how much muon spins are gathered, just means in the same direction. Okay, please remember this, muon spins are aligned in the same direction. So then they, uh, if the asymmetry is complete 100%, all the muon shows the same direction. If we say 50% asymmetry means 50% of muon the, uh, doesn't, show, doesn't show this spin polarization in the same direction. Then we calculate this asymmetry. Then we have such a kind of this kind of figures in the paper. After we calculate the asymmetry parameter from the low data. So then if you see the uh, MIRSA paper, the, you can see this kind of the strange figures. But how do we understand this figure? That is the qu next question. For instance, red one, just gradually going down. Why that is gradually going down? Then how we can understand the uh, such what sort of information from this figure and also black one so blue one show the sort of the wigglings then go down go up go down go up go down and go down go up blah, 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 just like a snake okay so what 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 the meanings of this uh, up and down wigglings what sort of meanings we can understand from the wigglings that is the key question how to understand the mirror the uh, study as long as we understand the, uh, this property, they are not so difficult for all of you to read MIRSAR paper. Then I talk about the uh, principle, how to understand this from now. Okay, so then as I said to you, muon has a lifetime of 2.2 microseconds. Now, what's happened is muon decays to the positron and two neutrinos. Then we detect this positron by the forward and backward counters. Then sometimes we say counters are to be the muon counters, but exactly saying this is not a muon counter, it's a positron counter. So that is a nuclear the science technique. The interesting this positron is being emitted along mainly along the spin, muon spin direction. Okay. There are many positrons are coming out from the muon spin direction, but less against the muon spin direction. On the other hand, neutrino is a completely the opposite side of the positron. So neutrino, the, I talk about the complete difference. Neutrino is very important nowadays for the uh, particle physics. How much mass the neutrino has. So if neutrino has zero mass, 
we don't need to change the principle of the physics. But if the neutrino has a mass, then we have to change the basic knowledge of physics. So now the to measure neutral mass is now very fashionable research area for the particle physics. <coughs> so your JPA, the Japanese science, the world of science are now studying how much neutral mass are there by using the accelerator. So maybe if we can decide the neutral mass that could be like a worthwhile to have a Nobel Prize. Okay, so then from now on, I talk about the muon data, but please understand that data is gathered by the position. Okay, position. So then the come back to the realistic condition. This is a, a real spectrometer for mu SAR. <coughs> so please see this one, black one here. These are positron counters. The sample is around sitting in the uh, center of the spectrometer and then counted the uh, uh, muon, the emits the positron from the sample and the positrons are counted by these muon counters. We say positron counters. This is just a plastic counter, the uh, doped by lead, just very simple. So these are the, my old students, the uh, Dr. Letono and Dr. Fami. They are now working in ETS as lecturers. So they studied, they studied the MUSR for three years with me during the PhD course, courses. Then they, uh, after the graduation, they got a job in ETS. Then now the, uh, they are now studying the other the uh, material sciences. But sometimes we talk about the MUSR. Okay, the cost is very big. I calculated this one, translated this uh, cost to be in the rupia. So just one spectrometer in total cost is a 13 billion rupees. So very expensive. So if we break this one, we cannot build up this one anymore again. It get too expensive. So then what we have to use this kind of the very expensive the machines at the other point. So, but uh, as long as we use exactly, we don't break, then we can have very advanced data to discuss the advanced physics. So if you join to us, of course, you can enjoy to use this kind of very expensive, uh, but very funny and very interesting equipment with us. Not so difficult, just only they started to learn about the physics just after they joined to me, but they can they, uh, operate the, this kind of the, uh, spectrometer very easy. Okay, so the MIOSAR spectrometer. So how do we the, uh, count the positron? I demonstrate from now, okay? So these are four counters. This one is backward counters. The each counters are constructed by the uh, sum of the uh, uh, positron counters. They segmented like that. This is just an image. We have some much more, many segmentations on each counter. So here is a sample, okay? This is a basic idea for the MSR spectrometer. So, so for any, the uh, facilities in the Canada, Japan, PSI, Switzerland, and Asian countries, the con concept of MUSA spectrometer is all the same, all the same, everything is the same. Put the sample in, the, in between the backward forward counter and count the positrons which are coming from the sample, which are coming from the uh, mu. Then we inject mu inside the sample, okay, like that. Then the image is also good, me passing through the sample, but please image the muons are stopping inside the sample. Then after stopping inside the sample, muon decays to the positron with a lifetime of 2.2 microseconds. Okay, so that positron can have a good enough speed to come out from the sample and hit the counter. Image like that. The muon coming in like this, this is beam line direction. So the muon spin direction is like this. They come in and emit the positron, and the positron hits the counter. So the image is like that. So then I, when the positron, okay, once again, when the positron, they hits the counter, what happens is counter creates sort of the light, but a very small light. We cannot see by eye, okay, spin there. They put in a light here. 
right here, right here. So because the, uh, <clears throat> this, the position counter, it, position counter is dot by lead. So when the charged particle is passing through such kind of plastic counter, plastic counter can create some sort of light. The, uh, how much light we can see is, usually we say like a 30 photons per one positron can be created in the uh, uh, counter. The 30 photons, the very small, for instance, the light is on the basis of the photon, okay? The photon is a quite small number. Usually we have much more photons as a wave, then we can understand the light itself. So then the uh, <clears throat> very tiny, the light cannot be detected directly. So then what we, how do we use is we amplify. Okay, we amplify the signals. That means amplitude of the signals is very important. How to amplify signals is the high technology given from the nuclear science. Then we put the photo multipliers like this on the counter, then detect the muon signal. Then this photo multipliers is a very small like that. We are now using this kind of photo multipliers. Okay, so very small one, but very expensive. For instance, 40, 40 million rupees per each. So how many photomultipliers we are using for the spectrometer is near 200. So we are using 200 photomultipliers to amplify the uh, positron signal. So how much we, this the photomultiplier can amplify is more than 10,000 times or 100,000 times the bigger signal. That means uh, like a 10 to 3 to 10 to 4 times bigger signals we can see. Then we can have the uh, very small amount, the uh, positron signal to be as the electric, the real electric signal. Okay. The four buckle counter here. Then we can count number of the positron. Then the uh, positron hits a counter. The photomultiplier can give us the electric signal like that. Then we can gather the, this electric signal by using some the detected detectors. Then we can count up the, how many the positrons can pass through the, these counters. Then we can understand the emission signal, okay? Just only counting a number, one, two, three, four, five, just only, but up to millions and millions, the um, events we count up. Then this is a realistic data, which is the obtained by MSR. So please see this one at a time. This one at a time. That means that zero time means million eyes at the sample. Then start to increase a signal here, here. Then mu event, that means the number of the counted positrons. Then time here, the counted position is decreasing, decreasing like that. Then this one is a mu lifetime of the 2.2 microsecond. So this is the low data, okay? This is the low data, but the realistic the published paper is completely different from this, completely different. Then why we can have such a completely different data from this low data? This is just like a mathematics, okay? Please understand the mu lifetime. Lifetime means just a decreasing, decreasing number of muons which can be available. So for instance, these muons, these muons can survive up to like a 20 microsecond. So a long time, the survivor. It's very same with the human beings. The human beings lifetime in Japan is now nearly in between like, like 85 years. So then within 85 years, the number of the people are decreasing year by year. The same lifetime is like that. So if we have the logarithm scale plotting like that, the lifetime becomes the straight line and disappear completely. Just like uh, uh, up to 20 microseconds, we can have the signal like this. Then we gather the number of the events by using a PC, okay? The photomultipliers, these are photomultipliers, then gather the signal and send to the PC and count the numbers. So this one, they forward the counters counted by the, uh, counted the number of the events. And then this lifetime. The lifetime, they can decrease the number of the uh, <coughs> uh, mu events at time t. Okay, so this one they forget about at this moment. So how this one is gz? Gz means 
the house, the mean spin polarization is changing in time. We say relaxation property, the relaxation function. So the forward and backward. Why here is negative is the focus backward, the position is completely opposite to the uh, <coughs> sample. Okay, uh, time zero, the time zero means uh, this value. This value is the uh, time zero number of the uh, events. The lifetime here, lifetime means this one. Time by time, number of million, the will be decreasing. Then remember GZ, it's a uh, mean spin polarization, depolarization function. So that means how much mean spins can keep the polarization in time. Then they are four backward counters. Then what we do is we just simply calculate the calculate the symmetry parameter like that. Four minus backward and divided four plus backward. So that means how much mean is now <coughs> the polarizing in the same direction. Okay. So then. This one is a little bit uh, complicated function, but if we calculate the symmetry parameter, so this part, lifetime part, the disappears. Okay, lifetime part disappears, and then the only GZ is left. And A0, A0 means the asymmetry parameter at time zero. Time zero means how much the mu is <coughs> polarized to the same direction. Then we say, the A0, that means like a, uh, just only a simple parameter plus the ZZ. Then we can describe the asymmetry parameter by using only the relaxation function, we say depolarization function. That means in time, how the mean spin is changing, the mean spin polarization is changing in time. That is important. Then we can concentrate only to the uh, relaxation function only. As long as we discuss the relaxation function, we can understand the motion of muons. So how? That is the uh, <clears throat> next step. And in materials, they're just like by image I show you now, okay? The four are the backward counter there. Then the sample is here. The muon stopped in the sample with the keeping the, this muon spin direction. Just after muon stops in the uh, sample, then the start to decay with a lifetime of 2.2 microseconds, okay? Then positrons are, are emitted from the, the immune and heat the counters, both counters. So then as I talk to you, the positron emission is much bigger than, is much bigger the following this mu spin direction. So in this case, what's happened is, we count the more positrons by four counters rather than the backward counters. Okay. If so, let's calculate the symmetry parameter in this case. The number of the forward is much bigger than the backward. If so, the asymmetry parameter is forward minus backward divided forward what forward plus backward. That means the forward is larger than the backward, the asymmetry parameter becomes positive. Okay, bigger than zero. If the mu sees to the our direction, okay. That means the mean spin polarization is in parallel with the uh, counters. What happens is both counters, they count the uh, position in the same ratio. The, this side is many, but back side, this side is less because the mean spin direction is in this direction, polarization in this direction. So around here, the uh, counters, <coughs> the spectrometer counts the many positrons by around this area, okay? If so, what happens is, the number of total counted number, the of the by four buckle counters are the similar. The four buckle same. Then the symmetry is forward negative backward minus backward divided by four plus backward. If the forward and backward show the same number, the symmetry becomes zero. Okay. I change the spin direction again. Okay. The, if the mirror spin directs the backwards the counter direction. The condition is completely different. So now the backward becomes bigger. Number of the position they counted by backward becomes bigger. Then asymmetry parameter becomes less <coughs> than zero. That means negative. Okay, let's say the mu spin directs this direction. So then they are around this area, the count area of the counters counted the position on the with is equal <coughs> the number then asymmetry becomes zero, okay? 
then come back to the first one. Okay, mu spin directs the four counters. Four counters counted the more muons. The asymmetry is the positive. So then if they are in parallel to the uh, <coughs> counters, asymmetry becomes zero. And mu polarization directs to the uh, backward, backward counters, the asymmetry becomes negative. And this condition, asymmetry again becomes zero. So in total, if the mu spin, okay, if the mu spin stops inside the material, then if the mu spin shows like a precession motion like that, okay, precession motion, just like a rotating inside the sample, how we can see the asymmetry parameter, okay? Asymmetry parameter is the most important parameter for MSR. Then <clears throat> becomes like this. So then what happens in the end is we can see it's just like a, a oscillating property in the asymmetry in time. Okay, you understand? Once again. Okay, once again. So if the mu spin is rotating inside the sample, we can see in the end the oscillation property of the uh, asymmetry parameter in time like this, okay? So then the mu spin is smoothly rotating inside a sample. This oscillation property becomes cosine-like. From one to zero, zero to minus one, minus one to zero, zero to plus one, plus one to zero, then the, this becomes cos cosine curve-like. So then they are more image like that. So if the mu, in the realistic image is like that. If the mu is interacting with electric spins and if the mu start to rotate in phase like that, all the mu show the same, the uh, rotating property. That is the same condition with that I spoken to you, okay? So this case, what's happened is <clears throat> asymmetry parameter against the time becomes like this. Okay, asymmetry parameter shows like a cos cosine oscillation, following the oscillation of the mu inside the sample. Then we inject, after we inject the mu into the material, if the mu shows like an in phase, the coherent, the precession motion inside the material, what we can observe in the end on the PC, okay, in the PC is, we show, we see such like kind of the cosine curve property. Then from, then we, when we observe this cosine, the oscillation property in the end, what we can the, uh, declare is all the muons inside the material shows a, like a precession motion in phase, the same precession motion in phase. So, how we can understand this kind of mu precession motion is all the mu inside the material, they can feel the same local field condition. That means at any mu positions, the mu can see the same, the uh, local field inside the material. So then uh, this corresponds to the appearance of a long range order state, just like a magnet. So in order to discuss this kind of situation, the uh, just the experiment is fine, experiment result is also fine, but sometimes we need a much more detail the investigation by using computational technique. So even though we observe this kind of cosine precession, the, we can declare the appearance of just, long, just like a magnet state. But in the end, if we discuss more deeper points like a muon position, the hyperfine field, and multi properties, we need a computation of the task, computation jobs, which is completely separated from the different from the experimental the technique. That is a computational sense, DFT. Maybe next time the, I talk about the DFT, the studies, how we can the carry out by using what sort of the machine conditions. Okay, but usually this like a beautiful cosine precession is not so easy to be observed because the real materials 
are not so clean all the time. Sometimes dirty, sometimes they have many defects inside samples. So then they uh, please understand this is a very ideal condition for magnetic materials. On the basis of my experiences, maybe less than 10% or like a 20% the possibility we can see this kind of the uh, cosine precession motion, but almost of the magnetic materials shows a different property. So then they, uh, I show the some property, but please understand, please be aware. So this one, I'm not talking about the very ideal condition. So then they, uh, in one extreme case, then I next talk about the different condition, but all conditions can cover all of the data property. So that means as long as you understand some sort of the, these image-like conditions, you can understand all the MUSR data. Anyway, as long as we see the cosine property, we can understand the motion of the mu inside the prop magnet, inside the material. Then how to analyze this, the frequency and those others, we apply the relaxation function. So then now relaxation function becomes very important to understand in the physics. Then we can apply, for instance, in this case, cosine curve. So this is a realistic case, okay? Please see, if the mu spin precession is in the same direction, but different frequencies, so we can see the damping property of the mu spin, the precession motion. This is a very realistic condition because in the real materials, we cannot guarantee the completely same local field condition around the mu. Some mu, they rotate very slowly, some mean rotates very quickly. Then we can see the sort of dumping property. The dumping property means the, uh, just like a distribution of the uh, uh, rotating the frequency. Then from this, the uh, parameter again, we apply the relaxation functions. Then they will analyze the, this data. So then the, as you can see, this one is, uh, I wrote down the like a mathematical the method so it seems to be very beautiful, but the realistic data is not so like a beautiful. Then how to apply, how to choose the analysis function is a key point, key technique for MSR. This is not so easy. Then they, but as long as we discuss with the senior guys like me, they, we can suggest the, the appropriate analysis functions. But there are not so many analysis functions in the world at this moment. That if you remember, some sort, sort of kind of the, like a less than five types of analysis functions, you can use MSR. So this is still, we can see, we can see a case, we can see the mu spin precession motion. But in extreme case, the, uh, we can apply the analysis function like that. So some parameter is correspond to the ML final, but the, I, I want to skip such a detail condition. Okay, this is the most extreme case. Okay, mu spin, mu spins, all mu spins show the complete different motion. Rotation direction is different and speed is also different. In this case, we no longer see the mu spin precession properties in the asymmetry. Then what we can see is just only the decay of the asymmetry parameter. Decay of the asymmetry parameter means the mu spin polarization is losing, is being lost. The in time. Now, please see this sphere so carefully. In the beginning, at time t, all the muons are aligned in the same direction, but start to uh, depolarize in time. So, in this case, we see only the decay of the symmetry parameter. So, in this case, the, uh, the problem is uh, how to analyze this kind of the uh, extreme time spectrum. That's the next question. So then uh, uh, sometimes we have to think about the very special cases, special function, but sometimes we simply can apply the very simple functions. For instance, uh, sometimes we use this exponential, we say Lorentzian function to analyze this kind of the uh, property. But this Lorentzian function is very important to discuss the spin dynamics because the, uh, in order to discuss NMR data, we always use this function. So then this function is a very good function to reproduce the uh, spin dynamics. Then also this is available for MSR 
to analyze the data. Then applying this function, the uh, sometimes we can discuss much more detail the uh, conditions of MSR. <laughs> so I talked about three cases now, but only these three cases are good enough to discuss the realistic the, uh, data. So as long as you understand these three cases, the next question is how you can apply these cases to realistic data to discuss the result. That's only. So simply speaking, MIRSAR is not so difficult. But for young students, young people who don't know about MIRSAR, the MIRSAR seems to be just like a very like a heavy tasks because they, uh, we have to go to the uh, foreign countries and we have to use the accelerator, we have to use the very expensive equipment that causes a very big gap the, uh, to the young people to use and to think about. And also, as long as we cannot image the mirror spin motion like that, not so easy to understand the mirror time spectrum. So that is a, a very big gap the, uh, between the uh, young people and MSR. But as long as we understand, like in a schematic viewpoint like this, the MSR is not so difficult, much more easy compared to the neutron, compared to say, the NMR. So then uh, please understand, even though you, we use a facility, but the uh, principles of MIRSAR are very, not so difficult, okay? Then sometimes they, uh, we analyze this, the, this sort of the extreme case by using a Lorentzian function, but this one is T1, corresponding to T1, that is the uh, uh, same with the uh, MIRS, uh, NMR. Okay, so now these are <coughs> descriptions of the uh, MIRSAR techniques. So as long as you understand these techniques, the, uh, you can understand what's going on on the air materials. So then the, uh, from now on, uh, by using 10 minutes, I show you some examples of the MIRSAR, the uh, science, MIRSAR studies as much as possible. Okay, but before that, do you have any questions? If you have questions, I can simply answer to you now because the, uh, from now I talk about the realistic experimental the, uh, examples, which is much more complicated and difficult for you to understand. <coughs> okay, if you have uh, any question, uh, please uh, raise your uh, hand or uh, put in the uh, chat box. Okay, I think it's okay. What can I sound? Okay. Oh, yes. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hmm? Okay. Any question? Sorry. Oh, Eka? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, please. Eka. I want something that the more face this. According to the direction of the field uh, produced by the crystal, so that is uh, affect the asymmetric curve. Ah, uh, good question. Because uh, <clears throat> exactly speaking, not exactly speaking, not the uh, if you talk about the uh, detail, it's not so easy because it, it depends on the structure of spectrometer, but technically we can use a powder sample and a single crystal sample both together. And asymmetry doesn't change. So the, we can see a little bit the different the properties of time spectrum if we use both like powder, single, but usually we can use powder. That is also another advantage for MSR. For instance, the for neutron, in order to discuss a spin structure, there we need a large single crystal for neutron experiment. However, we don't need to have such a large single crystal for muon experiment to discuss the uh, spin structure. But on the other hand, we need a DFT calculation to discuss a spin structure, which is again, a bit complicated. But we have the computing resources with us in Riken, and also we are now developing how to approach to this problem. So then I can see the Budi are depending on the name here now. Budi, are you, are you fine? Yeah, I'm, I'm fine, but I cannot show my video. 
Why? Is that okay? <laughs> anyway. It's kind of a bit mess in here, in my house. <laughs> oh, I see. I don't want to see. And this Budi Arikarimara <laughs> is my first student from Indonesia and worked on the DFT. So year by year, I have some students, then they are still developing the way to do. So then they, uh, we have some fixed way at this moment to discuss the uh, spin structure, even using the powder data. Okay? Hi. Thank you. Oi. Sama sama. Okay. Uh, polycrystal or single crystal is uh, no problem. Yeah. The, the uh, MSR. Yes, it is uh, advantage uh, advantage uh, point using the the MSR. Okay, any other question or uh, comment? Okay, no. Okay. Okay, no other. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, so we have five minutes or ten minutes to go. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then I show some examples. So then if the time is up, they, uh, I talk about them in the next time. Yeah, okay. Maybe, uh, to, uh, this is, sh shall yeah. I talk about the DFT or superconducting state next time? Yes, yes, of course. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Okay, so then I talk the, uh, both because it's easy for me. Yeah, yes. So next time, I sh I spend the time a little bit more about the uh, other magnetic materials, but for to introduce the next the uh, talk, I simply talk about the superconductors first. Okay. Yeah. So as you know, the uh, superconducting state is very important to be studied, even from now. It was found more than century ago, one century ago, and uh, discussed. By the uh, then they are now we partially understand the superconducting property, but still, that is still the uh, top physics. Then, so how do we discuss the uh, superconducting state by mu SR, okay, experimentally? So, I show you now how do we study the uh, mu SR by the superconducting state because the uh, processality is studying the mu SR by uh, is a superconducting state by mu SR. So the how to discuss this one. So the, okay, let's say here is a superconductor, outside superconductor. The, if we apply the magnetic field, what's happened? Okay, magnetic field in this direction. Maybe some of you already studied from the protagonist lecture. Then this magnetic field is distributed inside the uh, uh, superconductors. Okay. Then field is applied and the outside the material, of course, field is constant. But if the field comes into the inside of the superconductor, what's happened is this multi field is decreasing in a distance from the surface. This is the one character of the superconductor. <clears throat> so if you want to study why such a situation happening, please, they ask the process he knows about this. Then we say, this is the xi, uh, xi means the coherence length, or sometimes penetration depth. Then in order to discuss this important parameter from mu side, we apply the much more stronger field. In the case of type two superconductor, the distribution of the multi field inside the sample becomes like this. Type one, there are no multi field inside, but type two, sometimes we can see the uh, penetration of the multi field like that, making by the making the flux state. The multi field is distributing like this. So this can be the uh, this knowledge is available from processicity. The from inside to the superconductor, we inject some muon, okay? Inject some muon from outside to superconductor. So what's happening is. The, uh, this one is like a schematic image of this distributing the internal field, like a multi field inside the superconductor. So not flat, just like a go down, go up, go down. So if you put the mu inside the superconductor, 
some mu stops here, some mu stops here, stop here. That means uh, this mu see the different magnetic field compared to this. If so, what's happened in the end? If you think about Lama precession motion, this mu shows a different Lama precession motion frequency compared to this. So this mu sees a slower, slower magnetic field compared to this. This one is larger. That means the Lama spin precession frequency of the mu is much faster than this. So that means I show you already the like as a second case for the mu spin precession. Then, interestingly, this mu spin precession motion is related to the disk xi. Xi means like a penetration and uh, penetration depth. Then. <clears throat> This one, mu spin relaxation rate is corresponding to the uh, penetration depth. Then that corresponds to the uh, effective mass of the superconducting state. Just I don't I, I don't talk about the detail of this. What is the M star? This effective mass NS. NS is the density of the superconducting the uh, Cooper pairs. Then uh, uh, this one, then superconduct the density of the superconducting electron pairs is a key point to discuss the uh, uh, superconducting state. So then, but interestingly, we can discuss this parameter directly by using MSR. So this one is much more good schematic view how to understand the MSR time spectrum in the superconducting state. So in the superconducting state, in the type two case, then we can see the sort of distribution of the abricosoc the lattice. That means the multi field is distributing like that. We say abricosoplatis. So then, uh, if we stop putting a mu inside the, uh, uh, this abricosoc state, that is the question. So this one is the uh, <coughs> mathematical view of the abricosoc state. There is a minimum field is here, maximum field is here, and that is distributing and it can be calculated by using some sort of equation, fixed equation. The average is b. Then if you stop the mu here, the bottom point, mu start to show the very slow rotation. However, if the mu stops at the elastic high field position, mu shows a much more higher, the faster lama spin precession motion. Then again, slower one, maximal one shows much more higher. Then if we put in the many mu inside superconductor. Some mu shows a much more faster frequency, but some mu shows a slower frequency. Then what we can see is this one, the normal state mu spin precession property. Okay, there is a very natural decay here, but in the superconducting states, due to difference in this, the Lama spin precession motion, we can see the decrease of the uh, polarization property like that from blue to red. This is realistic data, so there are many, many parameter, the uh, factors why we see the small kind of the differences, but we can definitely see differences, okay? So this one is how to pick up the superconducting state by MSR. On the other hand, <coughs> this one is my data, all data. This one also high TC data, normal state, we can see the very nice mu spin precession like that. But in the superconducting state, the mu spin precession motion shows a sort of large the dumping property, just like a mu spin relaxation property appears. And this dumping property becomes stronger, stronger, stronger with decreasing temperature. So this difference is caused by the superconducting state. Then dumping rate is becomes higher, 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 and becomes like this. So this temperature dependence is also very important to discuss the superconducting state because this one the complete corresponding to the density of the uh, Cooper pair. Okay. So then this one is very old, the uh, data taken by other the experimental data on the high TC in the beginning of the high TC history. So this one is corresponding to the uh, like uh, <clears throat> superconducting the electron pairs density. This is they coming up to the TC. So this, the uh, temperature dependence of the density of the Cooper pair can be fitted by the theoretical function. Then we can discuss a TC and some sort of pair Cooper pairing mechanism. But same things can be done 
by using a MSR, by using a disk, temperature dependence of deserialization rate. So then once new superconductors appear, what the new the researchers do is we simply measure the temperature dependence of the uh, this mu spin relaxation rate. <clears throat> then we discuss the pairing mechanism of superconducting property. This one is also the same. Then if we discuss the Cooper pair symmetry, there are some the, uh, the models or types to distinguish which data, which the model is the appropriate to discuss the data. This one is also the, the uh, data to be done on high DC samples. So this one is very old data. Then we can discuss the uh, principal property of the superconducting state, even using MSR. And now the, uh, in the physics field, MSR is recognized to be a good experimental tool to discuss, to discuss the superconducting property. So then if you're interested in <coughs> the, uh, we can show much more detailed things and we can the, uh, show the uh, detailed path, how to access to the uh, this data. That is important. Okay, so now the time is up. So I have more, more example like that, like that, like that, blah, 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 blah. So I will talk about the, uh, these in the beginning of the next talk. Then they uh, come into the DFTs and some sort of the uh, explanation of the uh, high TC, the uh, property. Okay, this is good. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Watanabe Sangs, with a very nice uh, talk already two hour actually, right. but uh, it, uh, it, I think it's a, a very fast because uh, the, the, the uh, topic is uh, <laughs> quite uh, very, very interesting. Uh, for, for me also, it's very interesting uh, because oh. there are some uh, new uh, information, some, something like uh, uh, um, USR for uh, a volcano. Uh, you can you you can use the uh, USR for a volcano and also for uh, to to find the the secret room in a, a pyramid. Okay, it's a, a very interesting. Uh, uh, a lecture. Uh, okay. Uh, any question or uh, comment or uh, uh, suggestion or uh, anything? Okay. Uh, I I think some of of uh, students uh, should be okay. One missing. Okay now. Okay, but so that, yeah, uh, also uh, Lucy Sang also here, Ai Sang, Tob, uh, Tob, Saragi Sang also here, uh, Budi also here. Okay, any question? Uh, Abdan, you have a, a question? Or uh, Yati? Oh, okay, Abdan. Yes, I have a question. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank you for the nice talk, uh, Professor Watanabe. I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, in the beginning of the presentation, you mentioned about uh, DC moon source and uh, pulse moon source. Uh, what the difference between these two? And the second question is, uh, whether the two source moons have the same case on the asymmetry curve that you mentioned, uh, there is the three case on the moon uh, spectroscopy data. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, so second question, please again. Second question is uh, whether the two source, uh, pulse moon source and DC moon source, have, has uh, uh, the same case in the asymmetric curve? Ah, uh, yes. So, so, second question first. It's yes. Complete the same. It doesn't change so much. So, then I have my. Can you see here? Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Can you see? So just a, what the different DC and pulse? Simply beam structure. It depends on the accelerator structure. So okay, we see the time t here. Okay, time t. Can you see? So uh, yes. if we detect muons, how we can see the DC muon is just like a part, just one muon, one muon, one muon, one muon, one muon in time. 
then this time difference is around four to eight microseconds. This is DC beam structure. Okay. So then if we detect only one muon, only one muon, then one muon can give us a signal in between this time. The one muon can identify only one, one positron. That means that within this short time, like eight microseconds, we can increase the resolution of the detector as much as possible. That means a higher resolution. This is DC, PSI and Triumph. Okay, both are in the nice places, okay, Vancouver and Zurich. Wonderful, super wonderful, very expensive. Super expensive, but very wonderful. On the other hand, pulse mu, the time here. This is Logoport and JPAC. Pulse mu, just like pulse. The many, many millions, like a thousand, thousand millions are in the pulse. Okay? Then pulse structure, next pulse is 20 milliseconds. Millisecond means all of the millions in this pulse completely disappear before the next pulse comes in. So that means that we can measure the long time as much as possible in between here. However, we cannot identify which mu is which. That means resolution is not so good, but we can measure in time, long, long time. That's the difference. So basically, how we can say is pulse mu is good for small spins. DC mu is good for magnets, strong magnets. That's the reason why I said we have to choose facilities, which one is better for us. Not a difference. However, just after muon stop inside the sample at T0, time zero, all conditions are same. Muon spin is just muon spin. Then asymmetry doesn't change. Just only resolution problem. And how long we measure the data, that is only the difference. Very simple. Okay. Okay. I okay. So this is a, a difference be, be, uh, between uh, pulse and uh, DC, continuous muon uh, beam. No different, uh, there is no different in the uh, data acquisition and uh, asymmetry, yes. Okay, uh, what, any question? Okay, what can I be saying? This uh, also, uh, yes, just a simple question. If we have a, a, a thin film, for example, a thin mm. film, because you said that the the uh, uh, the, the beam uh, or, or the the uh, both uh, pulse and DC uh, can measure the uh, uh, single crystal or polycrystal. How about the 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 thin film? It it is possible to measure a thin film. Okay, of course possible, but only one place PSI. Okay. They, they have a very special facility for thin film. Okay. The compression is very strong, but mm -hmm. it's a, like a complete number one beam, dream beam for thin film. Okay. And okay. for instance, the uh, thin film YBCO was measured in the past. Mm -hmm. Just made the checking, that means the thin film means we can control the million depths from the surface. So that means the PSI, we can measure up to around 100 nanometers thickness by changing a depth. But 200 nanometers is too thick already. But 100 nanometer thin film can be measured at PSI. Okay. Possible, possible. Oh, possible. Okay. Mm. So what is the the uh, main parameter? Main parameter. Uh, for measuring the uh, thin film because uh, because you know in all uh, recently uh, uh, a lot of uh, devices for the application they they always uh, make in the uh, in the thin film so it is uh, it is uh, possible one time that we can measure also in the uh, Riken Rao muon uh, facility or you you don't have any uh, Thin film, uh, is not, thin film is not good for us. 
completely impossible.、Mm. Only PSI, only PSI.、Uh, they have ultra slow immune being, but others don't have. Just only PSI. So they are experimental conditions, not, not so difficult. Of course, the physics seem is important. Of course, physics is important. The size has to be 20 centimeter,、uh, 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter at least. The this size, so the same film we need, and high quality and this size, and also stable in the air. Unstable sample is not so good. Stable in the air and this size of the sample is available. These are minimum conditions. Okay,、uh, any other question or、uh, comment?、Uh, please、uh, raise your hand. And another, another thing that、uh, we actually we already also uh, measure, uh, especially Lucy Sang and Ai Sang here,、uh, measure the、uh, sample for the solar cell sample. You kindly、uh, help us to set up the light. Or source, uh, uh, can you uh, uh, briefly uh, explain about the about the、uh, advantage of your、uh, setup to put the、uh, light source in the in the、uh, in the system, MSR system? Oh, light source. That means the、yeah. uh, has the uh, uh, synchronization synchronization between the mule and the light source. Especially pulse source,、yeah. even though we apply the light so strongly, the sample temperature doesn't change so much due to the duty duty cycle. So、mm. that is advantage. Okay.、Mm. Mm. And also okay, we can okay, measure、okay. the long time property. That is also、mm. the advantage. Okay. But unfortunately, strangely, light experiment cannot be done on PSI. Mm -hmm. And not so easy for Rutherford, but of course we can do. It, but they don't like so much. Oh, really? <laughs>、uh, because they are、uh, due to the difficult some、uh, how can I say the、uh, preparations.、Mm -hmm. So、okay. they don't like. So and JPAC now impossible. Triumph is impossible. So of course, interestingly, our facility doesn't mind to use. Okay. <laughs> that means as long as I work, no problem. Okay. okay.、Mm. So uh, in uh, in this uh, just just uh, outside of the science, actually. So how about about how about the situation in this、uh, in this pandemic? Is it、uh, still running or already stopped?、Uh, no, no, no. It's uh, uh, due to the、uh, our Japanese city government.、Mm -hmm. So then the,、uh, we stopped the national emergency alert the,、mm -hmm. last week because the、uh, number of the detection becomes became lower.、Mm -hmm. But now after we stopped everything coming up again, so maybe we will face to the fourth、mm -hmm. wave next week, from next week. <clears throat> Very bad because the Japanese government cannot control the、uh, Japanese citizens. For instance, we have no、ah. lockdown like yours. Ah, yeah.、Okay. The、uh, vaccines are delayed. They cannot、mm -hmm. buy as scheduled. I so, I already did the vaccine, first vaccine. <laughs> oh, from from university. From the whole vaccine is uh, what's vaccine? Uh, Sinopharm. Sinopharm vaccine. Ah, Chinese one. Not,、mm. Yes, Sinopharm is not a a visor. I think in Germany, maybe, yeah. Maybe my time will be in the next year. Very slow.、Oh, really? Very slow.、Mm. Oh, very it's, slow. It's quite slow.、Uh, you know, the、uh, for instance, the elder persons above the thirty sixty-five、uh, years, we have more than thirty-five millions. Thirty-five、oh, yes. millions.、Mm. But Japanese government has got the only four million. Oh, hi, hi, hi. No, no, four million. This is zero point four million. Vaccines. Oh really? Computer city. Computer city. Yes, it's it is it it need a long time to. Yeah, to very bad, very bad. <laughs> so, but maybe Japanese government would like to open the border as soon as possible. 
Ah, but the problem I is the uh, new types of the uh, virus, like uh, British type. Mm, I see. That is spreading. That is a uh, problem. Mm. So now Japanese government is very hesitating. But oh. for my view, it's very silly. Oh. Mm. Okay. Okay. Another question. Oh, Suchi already here. Is Suchi, do you do you want to ask a question? Yes. Yeah. Uh, hello, Watanabe san. Nice to meet you again. Are you fine? Uh, yeah, I'm good. I would like to ask about a negative mion. It's about uh, elemental analysis for mm. history thing, for example. So actually, I already heard, hear about this in JPS meeting, but uh, I don't know how to get uh, elemental analysis from USR time spectra. So, no, no, uh, we, don't you... a, uh, we don't use this spectrometer. Uh, not not me as our time spectrum. So no, no, no. How, how do you? Uh, we use a gamma detect gamma detector gamma ray detector. Oh, gamma ray detector. Uh, that is completely different. That means that we back the we moved out the spectrometer and mm -hmm. put the gamma ray detector around the sample. That is completely and... different because the negative muon can mm -hmm. emit we emit the gamma ray through the sample with a muon gamma ray. Then oh, we detect see. the uh, germanium type gamma ray detector, which is very expensive. <laughs> Ishida -san oh. has. Ishida -san has some. Uh, and then, what kind of data that we will get? I no, mean, just, uh, the from gamma ray detector to the huh? PC is automatic. It's a completely established. Then we mm -hmm. see the energy, energy and some peaks, gamma ray peaks. Mm -hmm. So as long as we can they determine the energy value for each gamma ray peak, we can determine the, and also height. The height is corresponding to the ratio of the atoms. Then we can investigate the uh, components. What sort of the uh, atoms are there inside the material and how many? So the experiment itself is very easy. Just to put the sample then put the gamma ray detector and wait a couple of days, just only. Then we can discuss. The experiment itself is very simple, but very expensive and complicated. Mm, so see. if you can bring something very historical from Indonesia to Lazaport, they are, they are very willing to give you the beam time, of course. Please um, steal something from museums. <laughs> Okay. So it, it, this is like a XRB time spectrum? Very similar. I mean, very very similar. The, the, the principle, I see. Very similar. Not, not, not the same, not the same. Not yeah. the same. But very similar. Mm. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. Budi uh, also raise hand. Okay. Uh, Budi? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, suddenly, I have a question related to high statistic data. Mm -hmm. uh, because I heard from the uh, last uh, Muon meeting that Steve Blundell is already using the very high statistic data. Mm -hmm. So my question is, uh, how uh, how much is the maximum can can one sample uh, have of about how many million event can be <coughs> can be? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So the test statistic maximum statistic can be approved by the uh, reviewer for the experiment? No, of course, it depends on the physics because usually we have 15 to 30 million events per data, per data point. It takes about uh, an hour and a half at PSI, but only uh, like a 20, sec 20 minutes at the last point. Mm. 20, 30 minutes at the last point. So then if so, if you have four days, how many data points you need? We have to sum up those kind of the plan. Mm. Then the uh, the reviewer can judge is realistic or not to achieve the uh, the good results. So depends depends. So long time ago oh, for depends. your okay, sample, thank you. mm, I've got uh, two days for only one sample, one temperature. Oh, because mm. I abused why we need such sort of super the high statistics. 
So in case uh, we have a good reason to have much more bigger uh, statistics, so it depend on the reviewer. Is it uh, possible? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, any other any other question? I also want to remind you that uh, you all the students have to uh, fill the the form Google form for the absence daftar hadir ya. Please uh, fill the fill the uh, form. Uh, okay, any other questions? Or that was already two and a half uh, hour actually for the okay for for the for the last session. Okay, any other question or no? Okay, uh, okay. Uh, we will we will uh, uh, we will have a photo session uh, uh, for the uh, for the end of the this uh, first uh, lecture. Uh, could you could you please uh, open your uh, camera just a moment or, or, or three or five seconds, uh, please? Uh, we we will have a, a photo session. Okay. Ah, uh, Suchi san. Yeah. Suchi san. Yes. New grass is good. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rosaldi, uh, Tri Joko Pada, Fira Helma, uh, Saripa, okay, Dimas, Ufa, uh, Trisna. Okay. 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 Ini uh, first, first, uh, first screen. Uh, Uh, Budi, Utami, Eka, Abdan, uh, Suci, Ruli, Rosaldi, uh, Andri, Lutfi, uh, Anissa, Bulusi, Patogar, Pak Rahman, Gita, Yati, Fira, Rosaila, Tri, uh, Nabila, Trisna, Ulfa, Dimas, Saripat. Oke, okay, this is the first uh, slide. Uh, Oke, okay, one, two, three, smile. Okay, uh, this is uh, our first slide. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, 